Oh, okay. That's a, oh, I got you. I know exactly what you're talking about now. Oh, thank you guys so, so much for joining us um, today for our discipleship development. We were just talking about um, uh, South Africa and, and, and other parts of Africa that we'd like to, to visit. I think one of the things that I'm going to really try to shoot for, um, oh, wow, um, is to be able to start a mission. Um, you know, having having it in our budget for missions, to for us to be able to go on missions. I would love for us to do more missions, and I would love to send young people on missions uh, to get a chance to go. I think it would shape their worldview, uh, help to shape their worldview, give them a different outlook, perspective, exactly. Amen. Um, praise God. But if you would, if you would, we've been talking about empowering kingdom empowering kingdom thank you guys uh as well so much for being here you definitely make the difference we we've been talking about empowering kingdom on last week we spent a great bit of time talking about anybody somebody Amen. Amen. That's good. The treasure they took out of Egypt. What was our, 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 our subject that we were driving the most? I wasn't here. Oh, you wasn't here? That's a good excuse. <laughs> stewardship. Thank you so much. Stewardship. Stewardship. We spent a good bit of time talking about stewardship. And one of our positions was the fact that the vast majority of believers don't understand their responsibility for stewardship. They don't, we don't understand that that's one of the reasons why he redeems us, right? Because a part of our mandate was to be the management system of God and the earth, right? Do we all agree with that? And this is big. So when we start talking about the importance and value of stewardship, uh, the way God works, and y'all can tell me if I'm wrong, but the way God works, he likes to see it work in your personal life before he uses <laughs> use you in it that way. Come on, somebody. And a lot of us don't have good stewardship in our personal lives, do we? You know, this is a mature group, so I know, you know, you guys probably got a, got a good handle on most of that. But a lot of young people that save, love God, and I hear wild and they think. <laughs> huh? Talk to me. Because we, we like kind of have, when we do get the resources, we don't know how, we don't want to allow it to bear responsibility because we don't really believe the principles of God. That's right. So we go out there and we try to be individuals and then instead of depending on God to be our provider, so we do for our jobs and we're killing ourselves. That's good stuff. I see why, for the most part, you, when, like when she said, when you do get the resources, majority of us, I do think they think about tithing and, and stuff like that first, but it's that rest, that uh, leftover, Come on. a better word, mm -hmm. that we don't do what we need to do with it, and we, we're supposed to ask God yes. for direction, and, Come on. you know, to, to show us what to do, show us how to do it and stuff, and we don't do that. We feel like we paid our tithes, yay, you know. I've been there. I remember a time in my walk where I felt if I paid my tithes, uh, God was going to take care of everything else and I could just wild out. Yeah. That's not how it work, is it? <laughs> huh? That's right. You don't manage it right. You, oh, you're talking good. Come on. So y'all just named three big things. Just in case, let's keep count real quick, <laughs> right? We named fear. Mm -hmm. That's big. Right. That's big. Ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Selfishness. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Those three things y'all just named, right, that, that, that tend to keep us from actually operating, you know, in a, in a decent, responsible level of stewardship, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what Pastor Drew, I was listening, I was just saying, um, we're not taught. Um, uh, so much seems to me to go way back to our contact with who God is. Because 100% of it is his. Come on, okay. come on. So he's letting us, <coughs> instead of saying, you owe 10%, he said, I'll let you have money. <laughs> right. 
You preach is good. You preach real good. That's the truth. I, I think we talked about last week the fact that if you don't realize it all belongs to him, you're missing it anyway. <laughs> you feel me? Uh, another big thing, praise God, is uh, in the ignorance piece is that the vast majority of believers, even their relationship with God is selfish. See, so there's no intent within them to come out of selfishness to selflessness. When you were designed by God to be selfless. See, it, it's not complicated. You know, I, uh, I'm i going to use sincerely as I pick at her. Uh, <laughs> change her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 she had uh, 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 Amazon coming. <laughs> Amen. Anybody been there? <laughs> and it was like a few days in one week, you know, different Amazon packages came. I said, you need to tighten up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and she's, her, her response to me is like, you ain't going to tell me what to do with my money. <laughs> See? And that, is that not how we think a lot of times? This big. This is big. And, 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 and honestly, this, y'all ready for this psychologically? When you start talking about taking on the responsibility to be a good steward, now you have to govern your resources. And it feels like somebody's telling you what to do. Oh, come on, we fight it, don't we? We fight it. We don't we, we don't we don't want that. Is that big or not? You 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 feel me? Think about this. Think about this. One of the things that that was mentioned Sunday in the conversation we talked about uh um uh vision a team concept right yeah. one thing that was mentioned that nehemiah came right and he and he observed uh the walls he went around the city and looked at night no you know and and, and this is how beautiful that really is but then when he brought it back to the people he didn't lead in with y'all gotta do right. he gave them the need the cause, right, right, because all of them should have felt some type of way about the walls looking this way. Oh, come on, somebody, y'all, y'all, y'all with me? And then they said, "We need to get to work." See, one of the things I think that the church as a whole is missing today is that we don't have that same type of response. We don't have the same sense of responsibility about the need. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, I have to be careful here. I know. I know that we've had some people who taken advantage of others, who manipulated others, yeah. who's who's uh, you know used their positions of power to manipulate others. I, I know this has happened. Praise God. So so there there's this fear that we have, right? Because nobody wants to be taken advantage of. But the truth of the matter is, when you're in an environment you know, where, where there is truth and it really is a heart for God, praise God. All you're really asking people to do is to pursue God. Right. That anything they do is based on their relationship with God, not based on, right? I believe that the reason why God brings us together, gives us a vision as a whole, praise God, is because he wants to pull resources to get somewhere mm-hmm. or to move something. Are you with me? Yeah. Is, am, are we in agreement? So there's going to have to be some sense of strategy, right? This has to be some sense of direction for us to be able to come together and pool those resources to accomplish or achieve something. Do we all agree on that? Right. So we got to get past the fear, don't we? Right. We got to get out of the selfishness and really begin to think about where is God trying to take this? Because re- really, remember, we're building something that's supposed to last for three generations. And right now, we're just in the foundations, aren't we? So, 
the, the, the kids that come from us and the kids that come from them, right, are all supposed to be able to take part in what we're doing right now. So just imagine this. The vision of this church is to break inferiority, right? Could you imagine what our community culture could look like if we were free, healed? Think about all the woes that's in our that's woes that are in our community, in our culture, based on mindset, based on self hate, right? Based on us not seeing ourselves like God sees us. See, that's the effort we're in, right? <laughs> right? You see how big that becomes? Anybody? Do we see how powerful that that is? Right now, here's the other part. It's not going to just happen magically, is it? How many people really love God? I mean, you really love God. And you got saved, you got baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen, somebody. And you still got to deal with you. Anybody? I got to get at least one witness. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll testify. I know that's been my story. You, you, you feel me? My point, my point is it's not going to happen magically, so there has to be an intentionality. Are you with me? Now, if we're going to see the same thing happen for others, guess what? There has to be an intentionality. Right. Hold on, you said what? The scripture do what? The scripture tell us we should be thinking about things. Yeah. <laughs> Quit playing. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not being funny. I'm trying to, I promise you. Most believers don't think that way, though. They don't see the scripture where it say, have the mind of Christ. Think on these things. Bring your thoughts under suggestion. Meditate on these things. It's all over the scriptures. And we just live life in this frivolous pretense with no real thought about what's going on. Exactly. Pastor, the reason why I said that, because this last week, I was, I was talk, asking God, I was walking through the house doing some stuff, and I was asking God something about, about me. Mm -hmm. And those were the words that he gave me. Come on, somebody. Take the time to think about things. That's rich. Mm -hmm. That's why I was saying that. Think about this. This is a good point to move in, right into where we left off last week in our conversation. The Egyptians literally came from a system, right, that they really didn't understand. Right? We, 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 we pattern that after the reality that a lot of us come out of a system that we really didn't understand or don't understand. Most of us. Some, some of us may have a good sense of financial, financials, money, whatever, but most, the vast majority of us don't, right? Right? So that's the system we come out of, and then we come into the system of kingdom, and we don't understand it either. See, now here's here's the reality. So one word that becomes big that sticks out for us is what? Understanding. That has weight, huh? The word talks about that too. All getting. Does not the word talk about that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, cause you, cause here's what we got. Can I make it simple real quick? Praise God. What'd you spill out there? Some water. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you know, I, I spent the whole day the other day cleaning this carpet. I couldn't even walk the next day. <laughs> think about this. Think about this. You 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 literally took out of eternity, placed in the time. Say amen if we, you with me. Amen. amen, somebody. Now, born into sin, shaping into iniquity. Okay, let me try one more time. You were taken out of eternity. That means you existed in the mind of God. Before you took on flesh. Right? Are we all there? And then we were put into the condition of fallen nature. 
Okay, so we actually have a spiritual, eternal truth, right? Before we take on the limitation of flesh. Now, the flesh we take on, right, is the condition of fallen nature. Okay, make sure we all together still understanding. That doesn't make our flesh evil. That makes the systems that develop the flesh evil. And that's not the mother and the father either. Hmm? It's a system. It's not. Uh, <clears throat> we think it, it, it's our fault or whatever. But it also wasn't the fault of those that came before us. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, and must be go back to the garden. Right. We're going back to the garden uh, up until this point. Because here's the, here's the reality that we have to re- remember. That doesn't make your flesh wrong. It makes the systems that have developed your flesh wrong. Yeah, it's important that we think about that. Because what we do, and, and the reason why I brought it up, is because what we've done, for the most part, in our salvation, is that we exist in an idea of pretense. And we separate ourselves from our flesh. So then when it comes taking responsibility in the flesh, we have this pseudo-spirituality that covers it. Wow. Wow. Oh, this is why most Christians aren't responsible when it comes to natural things. I'm talking, y'all. See, because what God is trying to do is redeem the flesh that he wanted to put in the earth. Because it's a holistic thing. That's exactly right. It has to be. Am I making sense? Or oh, like you had some. Am I making sense? Anybody? Y'all with me? Okay, now this is valuable, but this is valuable. Now, when you get saved, reconciled back to God, he's trying to redeem your truth. Let me make sure we're all on the same page. That means the truth of who you were intended to be when he took you out of eternity and placed you in the time. Say amen if you're with me. This is big. This is big, praise God. So he's not trying to save a fabricated pretense of who you are to get to heaven. He's trying to redeem the truth of who he put into the earth. You don't know that person. It exists. It's who you are, but you don't know it. You preaching, sister. You preach, you see? So here is the reality. Here's the reality. He's trying to show you your truth so that you can manifest that truth in the earth. Amen. Are we there? Yes. Right? Somebody just used the word holistic, didn't we? Yes. Right, that's powerful. Another struggle we have is that we're after humanistic perfection. Dang. Do you know anybody who's perfect no. in the flesh? No. No. See? Is it achievable? No. Let's talk real now. I'm, I ain't, I'm, I'm, we, this ain't regular church folk. Let's be real. You, 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 am, I, am I right? Right? So that's not what God is looking for either, is it? He's trying to get you to agree with the holiness, righteousness, perfection that He has achieved for you. Are we together? Amen. Amen. Now this becomes powerful. So here's the struggle my understanding is, is hard or difficult. Because I've been developed in a condition, right, that I wasn't designed for. Oh, help me, Lord, are we almost there? See? So when we start talking about coming out of carnality, coming out of the natural, praise God, what we're really saying is be re-educated to your truth. Say amen if we're there. we all in agreement. This is powerful, praise God. So here's where we're talking about when we start talking about understanding. Praise God. When Jesus said, get all your get and all your getting, get understanding. When he's teaching in, in, in Matthew 13, when he's teaching in Mark 4 about the seed, the soil, and the soul, soil, praise God, he's talking about what? Understanding. The first thing we see in the text is that understanding has to have depth. Y'all all saying amen. Y'all saying yeah. That means I can't tap into understanding in surface level thought. See, it requires depth. Now, we've created a church. We criticize people for having depth. 
We don't understand it. That's our promise you that this is the way. But it's impossible to really tap into intimacy without depth. Now, depth is not supposed to be complicated. It's, it's a hard thing. You have to yield. You, surrender is another beautiful word. You, are y'all with me? You see how powerful that really becomes? Let me, let me go here. Let me go here. When we start talking about understanding and we start talking about understanding God's systems, here's another thing that's going to blow your mind. God's systems are advantageous. But you're not supposed to be selfishly motivated as you pursue them. Holly, you're preaching too good. You got to slow down. <laughs> you got to slow down. You have to be motivated by him, but all of his systems that, that he's created for you to operate in are advantageous to you. But you can't be selfishly motivated. Go ahead. That's that's it. Well, here's here's one of the things about selfishness that I think we that we miss. We don't factor in. Selfishness isolates you. It isolates your perspective. It isolates your position. It isolates your resources. It isolates every aspect of you. That's not how you were designed to be in it. The whole idea of universe means it's all one sound. That means it was all designed to work together. When you're in isolation, you can't flow in the whole. That's big. See, in isolation, in the separation or the selfishness, praise God, you limit your perspective. God says, no, my perspective is wide. If you just agree from my position and then operate from that position, there's no way that you have missed the fullness of what I intended you to be involved in. Do you see how big that really is? Uh, Go ahead. The scripture of uh, quoting Paul, um, when he said that he prayed that we would, is it possible, when he was talking about us gaining how wide, how deep, the depth. Ephesians Ephesians 3, Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, I'm trying to keep up. (laughs) I I promise I am. Uh, Go on. I'm going to have to find a scripture, then maybe I can make some more. No, 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 no. One of the things, let's let's, let's explain it this way. When you start talking about, you were designed by God to be a misfit that would become a custom fit. Are you with me? Because a lot of times you're just out of place. Right. But you can't really honestly assess if you're out of place, if you're broken. Because you're filtering everything through your brokenness. Go ahead. But that's just like what you're speaking of, Paul. The fact that, see, Paul, was, he, he had to stay, first of all, he had to stay away for, for a while just to get right with God when he got convicted from mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. He stayed, for an example, he went to jail at, you know, saving Christians, but he went to jail when he was killing Christians mm-hmm. as well. So it just, at the same time, it's like you're basically just, when God, when, when God is, is with you, you get, you are, you'll be transformed, but becoming even more brighter you and being a more holder you. Because when Paul left and had that time, he had to get whole because he was killing so many Christians. So he had to get that time with God before he was able to start holding the Christians and getting Christians around and because a lot of you know being being a murderer is already a guilt as it is mm-hmm. and then God called him to have a purpose on his life he had to get that guilt and shame away first he couldn't just go straight to that position because if he went to that position then it would have it would have offset everything that was what God wanted him to have so he had to isolate himself for a moment, but really get intimate with God and be able to be prepared for the process.
opposite of what God wanted him to do for other Christians and, and things like that, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> you good. You got a decent argument going on. <laughs> think, think about this. Think about this. Most of the time, what we pursue, right, is that we, we want relationship for what? Ourselves. Our, our reason for wanting relationship is that we want acceptance, right? We want people to pacify how we feel, how we think. We want people to agree with us, right? So it's, it's the whole goal of relationship, right, is to pacify something off or broken in me. So when it comes to being a misfit, I ain't really down with that. As a matter of fact, I remember in my younger life, I did a lot of pretending to be the gangster because people generally wouldn't be able to, in my mind, people generally wouldn't, wouldn't like who I was naturally. Because naturally, I'm a sci-fi guy that loved to read. In reality, who, who was always very intelligent but was ashamed to show my intelligence. Because it wasn't cool. Are you with me? Come on, somebody. So, huh? Well, I pretended. Right? Why? Because I didn't want to be a misfit. Am I making sense? Are y'all y'all with me? But the whole time, God is telling me, no, 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 no. I made you a misfit. You're that away by my design. Okay. Not early on. Early on, I'm just like everybody else. I just want to fit in. I don't want to stand out. I want to be accepted. I want to be liked. Now, here's the fine prime point. And this, I'm, I'm coming to where you at. So it all makes sense. The, the, the PowerPoint becomes God wants you to have relationship. But you're not supposed to have relationship selfishly. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> he, wants you have, he wants you to have relationship because his goal is unity. His goal is our working together and what we can achieve as one. But he can't do it in brokenness and, 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 and he can't do it when we need healing. Right. Because then our expression of self is dishonest. Is anybody going to come in here with me today? <laughs> come on, somebody. But even, even when you try to fit in, people see it. Oh, yeah. Most of the time they do. Because I remember I used to go places where I didn't really want to go, but because my friends was going. And then people say, you don't even belong here. You know, why are you here? That's real stuff now. Mm -hmm. And I was wanting to, I wanted to do it because uh, I wanted to, wanted to know my, the people in my church better and I wanted to have a relationship with them and stuff like that. But God, he, God said, I don't need you to fit in. Mm. You know, and, and that stayed with me for a long time. You know, you don't need to. I don't need you to try to fit in. He was telling me he did not want me to be a part of a clique. Mm -hmm. Basically what he was saying, you know. And that stayed with me. And I, I sort of, if I saw myself, felt, felt like I was walking in that direction, you know, I would pull back uh, from people. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I misunderstood what he was really telling me now that I'm hearing this. Well, the motive is, is the motive should never be to fit in. Right. That, <laughs> that okay. anybody misunderstanding the that? Motive was wrong. The motive was wrong. Okay. Here, 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 here becomes, even in church, we're professionals at this. We create cliques, groups yeah. that get along and they can hang out, and then we justify that, don't we? Y'all yeah, know that we do this really well, especially in church, in the name of Jesus, right? <laughs> Here's the point in the direction I'm, I was trying to get to or going in. 
when you start talking about understanding, initially understanding has to come with yielding. You have to be available to understand. How many times we've seen in the karate movie where the, where the young student wants to learn but they know too much already and the teacher has to tell them, well, the glass is too full. You can't learn a new information if you won't empty the glass out, right? See, that's what yielding represents. Are, are you with me? But, but now here's the problem. Most of us are afraid to empty out. As a matter of fact, we actually have emotional connection to what we think we know. So if I empty out, I feel insecure. I'm talking in here, y'all. See, but with God, in this relationship with God, he's saying, if you're going to get understanding, you got to empty out. You got all that conditioning that you've shaped, that's been shaped in you in fallen nature. I don't need none of that. Right? I need you to see my perspective, right? So now you can interpret even the information that you have, you can reinterpret it through my truth and not through your experience or your emotional connection. Let me give you another example. Y'all making this harder than it's supposed to be. Let me give you another example. This is why people fight you or fight in their spirit to sustain their doctrines. Because they have an emotional connection to those doctrines. Let me, get, let me make it even more plain. If somebody had been a part of church and they told them in order to be saved, to make it to heaven so you don't have to face damnation, you can have eternal life in heaven, praise God, you got to do dot, 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 dot. And that's all they know. Then they come along and meet somebody and say, you know God loves you, right? He died for you while you were a mess. <laughs> Y'all missing a good place to shout. There, there's no qualification. Your goal should be manifestation, not qualification. Right? Guess how that person is going to wrestle with that? Because what you're telling them is all the things that they develop these emotional connections to Right? Are invalid. They, in their mind, they're trying to justify those things. They're trying to villainize you. Right? They're trying to show you, in their own thinking, show how wrong you got to be. See? Because what's happening in their mind is this cognitive dissonance that's causing them to wrestle with themselves. Am I making sense? <laughs> that's right that's exactly right that's exactly right the way i simplify this thing in my life just like sis just says i made god the priority now has anybody in the scripture seen anywhere where god's not supposed to be the priority nope. has anybody looked in the scripture and seen where you know making god the priority would cause you to be off nope. see here is where we're missing it God being the priority, it was always the issue. Are you with me? Even in John 17, verse 3, Jesus says, eternal life is to know God the Father. Boy, y'all just missed a good place to shout. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Now, no in the Hebrew is a pretty big word, isn't it? Because no just is not about a casual acquaintance, is it? Oh, you better talk, sister. It's about intimacy. It's about the depth. Am I making sense? Jesus said this. Eternal life. Come on, somebody. Okay. Let me make sure we all on the same page while, we, while we're here. You were brought out of eternal, eternity. You're already an eternal being. But you don't know that. You see? And Jesus is telling you, well, if you're going to know that, if you're going to know eternal life, the eternity you were brought from, all you got to do is get back to the Father. <laughs> you, you see? I made way for that to happen when I died. So it's not tricky. Ooh, I'm preaching so good in here. This is how powerful this really is. So when we start talking about understanding, we're not talking about something that has to be magic. We're talking about the right base. The real potential to understand God's systems, praise God, is you got to give up the lie. That's the fight.
there's a lot of connection one thing to the other to get to this that place. Mm -hmm. um, you, it's like you gotta connect your your truth to maybe your truth to understanding. Or I see these things just be going around in my head. Let, well, let me give you let me give you another thought to kick real quick. It, it, this should clear it up a little bit. One of the struggles in religion is religion teaches you to be intimidated by truth. Oh, how are you preaching too good in here, boy? Intimacy should make you available for truth. And I'm not talking about a truth. I'm talking about the truth. Because in intimacy, you already established that there is an absolute truth. See, and that's where most people struggle. Most people are trying to maintain based on a truth, right? Even now in this generation, what's big, what's big is your truth being the truth. See, that can't be because you're, you're temporal in the flesh. See, your truth can't be the truth. Your thinking is temporal. Am I making sense? That means if there's something greater that even my spiritual truth longs for, even when I don't know what it is, it's there, isn't it? That means there has to be an absolute truth. Okay, that answers the question. So my question about what I was talking to God about some days ago, you know, because I was saying, I, I was talking to God about where my life is now, from where it came from, and where it is now, and you know, and I said, but I said, God, there's got to be. More. Yeah. There's got to be more than what I'm seeing right now, or what I'm feeling, or what whatever you know. I said there's got to be more. Mm -hmm. And he actually spoke to me about me knowing. Come on. Truth. It's big. So here's here's the base. <sighs> Understanding. That means there has to be a surrender, a yielding within me, so that I'm no longer confusing are being intimidated by God's position. I belong in God's position. My thinking is actually designed for God's position, but I've lost the framework. Am I making sense? Right? So, so here we talked about fear. We talked about ignorance, right? Selfishness. None of these things are a part of your design. They're all a part of fallen nature. Come on, somebody. You see how powerful this really began? So even if we get back to talking about stewardship, stewardship works better for you. It's beneficial to you. So why would you resist operating in, operating in the truth of what was actually designed for you? Come on. Uh, uh, it's like, uh, okay, I tell God every morning, uh, I, tell, I, say, I yield to the Holy Spirit. I, um, I, I surrender to you today. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in that day, it's like I took my surrender back. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't the only one. Don't feel that way. We, you, you, I promise you're not the only one. <laughs> you know, and, and it's like I want to. I mean, I have a desire, a strong. We do. Just to God, it's all yours. Everything about me. These are the things that so everything about me, everything that concerns me, everything that looks like me, I give it to you because you know what to do with it, and I don't. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in that day, it's like it's like Romans seven. Everything I hate, I do. That's right. I mean, I think it's just called the, the human nature, and we're being changed from glory to glory. It's I think one of the things that I, I think is the root of, of this uh, uh, dynamic is that when it comes to religion, we're very good with a 
supernatural or, or, or spirituality that's science fiction. We do good with magic, ideas of magic. We do with concepts of magic, praise God. But what we don't do good with is how our spirituality should have a practicality. I'm preaching better than y'all looking. That's the reality of it is. This is one of the things why discipline becomes valuable, but the motive for your discipline can't be qualification. That don't mean you shouldn't have discipline. It just means that your discipline should be motivated by intimacy. See? So, so now it's fasting. Now you got people now that pray you don't need fasting, that God don't want us to fast. That's not true. You won't break this flesh without fasting. There have been things that I've walked through in my own personal life that I know was destroyed by fasting. Are you with me? What is fasting doing? It's voluntary brokenness. What, what needs to happen? The flesh needs to be broken. See, that's got to happen, right? But that's practical. See, we want something magical. And God says, no, if you believe truth, that's the magic. If you believe truth, you've already crossed back over into your spiritual reality. Now all you have to do is discipline your body to be in alignment with that. See, your body is not designed by God to be in leadership. Your spiritual truth is supposed to be in leadership. Am I making sense? That don't mean God don't do the supernatural, but supernatural is not how we interpret it. Please tell me I'm making sense so we all together. Back to understanding. Praise God. Understanding from an origin that means comprehension. Mutual agreement to stand in the midst of the right idea of the use of, of under is not beneath, but more likely to be between, amongst, or even beside. Right? So could we use the word understanding? So the idea of under in its original uh, in, in, in this original etymology or original context is not to be beneath. Come on, it's to be. No, it just made me think of the word submit. Come on, that's right. Um, because we, we don't understand that at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when I looked it up, it says it is to willingly place yourself under. Come on, that's real stuff. Mm -hmm. Now he's submitting to God again. Come on. That's the truth. So we get back to, to 2000, I mean, 2024. Because he's still trying to get the fallen nature out of us. It's the exact same reality. Am I making sense? So think about this. Where there is a lack of understanding, there is a potential for fear. And where there is fear, that can never be conquest. You see? Do, do we see how powerful this really is? We leave the door open for a lot of the things that continue to trap us. See? Because we just won't simply yield to the truth we were designed for. Okay, let me make it even more simpler. You're a spiritual being. Do you really believe that? See, that's the key. You have to really believe that. Now, I got to bring this flesh in the submission to this spiritual truth. How do I do that? Huh? Come on, intimacy, right? It has to be discipline involved. One thing I got to do is got to be able to tell the flesh that you're not supposed to be in a position of leadership. Whether, and then you got to realize all of the ways the flesh shows up. You know, flesh shows up through emotionalism, yeah. intellectualism. Are y'all with me? That doesn't make emotions wrong or doesn't make intellect wrong. That just means those, those things have to be subordinate to a greater truth. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Sorry. Yeah. This, think about how powerful this really becomes. God has an intent for who you are that you're unfamiliar with. But you have every opportunity now to know it and understand it. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. But in order to know it and understand it, you got to give up your interpretation. 
right? I used for an example earlier how years I was in the pretense of trying to be a gangster. See? You know when I started giving that up? Probably about five years ago. Saved, loved God my whole heart, know the word backwards and forward, praise God, but still had this persona that I felt like I needed to keep up. And God said, that's not even your truth. Why are you holding on to that? You know how happy I was when I just decided to release it? I can walk around without a mug. Y'all don't, y'all don't understand. See, those of us that grew up on the block, we know you got to keep your mug on. It's a sense of defense. Are you with me? Now I'm just as happy. Right? I can just be nice. And if somebody don't return it, niceness don't do nothing to me. Am I making sense? That's to the point. We talk about empowering the kingdom. Is that not our thought? There is understanding of the king, right? Understanding of self. Understanding of the kingdom. And then there is the understanding of the world system. Here's where it all starts making sense. We've been shaped by a condition of fallen nature, but everything you learned in fallen nature is not necessarily wrong. It's wrong how you've been taught to think about it. Can I give you the number one example? Money. Y'all missing a good place to shout. Money is power. That's exactly what we've been taught, isn't it? We've been talking about money is control. And none of those things are right, are they? Think about how deep this really is. The American dollar. You know the American dollar, when it started out, it was substantiated by gold. So for every dollar, because the dollar ain't nothing but a coupon. That coupon represented its weight or its value in gold or precious metal. Are we here? Today that doesn't exist anymore. There's no longer enough gold to substantiate how many dollars have been printed. In truth, your dollar, no matter how much you got, is valueless. But we add value but by the way we've been taught to think about it. Oh, I'm talking so good, y'all. Y'all got this in a good place to shout. Right? Now, here's the next level of that. You get in God, you allow yourself to, to denounce the lie because money is not power. What? You see, <laughs> wisdom is the power. You see, you see, I, oh, I'm telling you. God's wisdom, yeah, yeah, that's what we understand what you're talking about. But think about how powerful this really is. Because here's where most people struggle. Because they can't let loose of the lie. They keep wanting God to bless them with something. And God said, well, I can't really give it to you because you're still locked into the lie. Come on, somebody. The moment you break free from it, now God can be released to add it to you or aid you in your process of moving into it. It's no longer controlling you. Come on, somebody. You see how powerful that really is? See? So this is something you learned in fallen nature that on one end of his interpretation, it will work against you. But on the other end of interpreting it, it can work for you. Because even the scripture tell you that money is the, the, is the um, solution to all evil. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Money is the answers to all things. I, am I making sense? Do you see how powerful that really is? See? But then in some idea of religion, you'll think money is wicked. And money's not wicked. It's the mindset that approaches the money. Do I have anybody in the room? Yeah. Well, that's what, that's why Paul would say it's the love of money. That that it's the love of money, the wrong interpretation. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what we got to break off of us. And I'm just using that as one example. There are many things that you got to change the way you see, the way you interpret, the way you think about it. When we go back to the text, our original text, Luke 16, this is the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. See, the whole idea is that you got the, the world systems. These people know how to navigate these waters without no problem. How are you going to let them in wickedness out navigate you? And you have righteousness. <coughs> Am I making sense? 
See, this is where we're missing it, and this is where we have to pick it up. When we start talking about empowering the kingdom, this is where the decisions are being made. What if the church could build more nursing homes? What if the church could build more hospitals? What if the church could build more child care? And it really be positions and places where we're honoring God. See, this, this, these are the realities that we got to step into, that we got to be able to change our minds to think on this level. Let's go here. There, there is understanding of the king. Somebody say man, Because I wrote these out in one sentence, but it's a big sentence, isn't it? Right? Because we start talking about understanding the king. That's his own thing, ain't it? Right? You know how long it took me to really get a, get a good mindset or get my mind wrapped around the magnitude of God? Because I ain't talking about understanding him totally. What I'm talking about is uh, understanding the magnitude of who he is. Right? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, uh, We're talking democracy. Understand that king, um, kingship means a, is a time for meditation because it, you just can't, we can't conceive of the magnitude. That's, that's, I promise you we can't. Especially the way they did in, in, in the Old Testament. Right. Amen. Here's 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 where we're going with this. When you start talking about the Christ, uh, because the picture here is to understand the Christ, right? Let me make sure the theologically we 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 argue correctly. The Christ was given so that we could understand God. Anybody agree? That's big. Right. Because we're not supposed to make the cross Christ so lofty that he's untouchable. The idea is that here's a version of me that you can relate to. Boy, I wish I had somebody in here. That's big. That's big. So let's, now let's think about understanding the Christ. Praise God. Okay, I'll give you one, one example. There's seven times on the cross that Jesus shed blood. Boy, y'all missing a good place to shout. Now, now, now the blood is significant. So every time that the Christ's blood was shed carries weight how many believers has never even thought about the fact that he said shed blood in seven different spots see so when i start talking about understanding the king i'm talking about the weight of this you see you see how, how powerful this really becomes right right so think about this the first thing is he shed blood on the cross the scriptures say that was supposed to be for the lifting of the curse. How many people still operate in cursed conditions and say they saved? Think about that, right? See, you see how powerful this really becomes? And if you just break down every instance where he shed blood, it has significance on freedom and liberty that you've now achieved because of the shedding of his blood. See, when I start talking about understanding the king, this is what I'm talking about. Right? Think about this in Matthew chapter 4 when he's in the wilderness. You know the Holy Spirit sent him into the wilderness. Huh? Yeah, let's say it one more time. Forced him in. Oh, y'all missing a good place to shout now. Come on, somebody. This is before he gets ready to start his earthly ministry. There's weight to this. The Holy Spirit forces him into the wilderness, praise God, to be tempted by the enemy. And the enemy's first challenge is with an if. His response to every one of those positions of temptation is a teaching for you. The very first one is identity. How many, how many people in church is talking about the significance of their identity? Exactly. That's my whole point. See, when we start talking about understanding, the first thing, let's understand this king. Yes. 
the Christ that was given for us and the weight of who he is and what it means for each and every one of us. That's what I was trying to say whenever I was talking about one thing connecting mm -hmm. to another to get to the point of understanding. Come on. There's some things that it's almost, it's a process. It's a process. Yes, it is. You know, this thing connects to this thing, this thing connects to this thing, or this word or whatever, for you to get understanding and you got to go through that process of connection. Think about this, and that's my, my example of understanding the king, because I can go all day right there. I can talk six hours straight on understanding the Christ. But originally my, my area of study was apologetics. If I can't do nothing well, I can argue to Christ. You, you hear me? <laughs> that's why I believe that he's the absolute only way. You see what I'm saying? You can't tell me there's an alternate way. I, I see the Christ. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, here's the next thing. You got to understand self. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all talking now. Y'all got to come on back in because there's some weight to that. Mm -hmm. You know you're a layered person, a layered individual. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all got quiet. You don't know you layered <laughs> in your thinking, in your persona? Yeah, okay. okay, I'm going to give you a perfect example. I'm going to give you a perfect example. None of y'all have ever seen me mad, no. have you? You, you seen me mad? When was it when you saw me mad? With them kids that time they broke your window. Yeah, you saw me. <laughs> you saw me mad. You saw me mad. Listen, it's a whole different poly, ain't it? <laughs> You're like, where the world that come from? Yeah. <laughs> see, see, that's most of us. That's most of us if somebody take us there, push us there. We have a portion of us, a, a portion of ourselves that most people ain't never seen. And they'd be like, whoa. Right, right, right. <laughs> are you with? See, that, you're layered. But you need to understand yourself in the good, the bad, and the ugly. What religion teaches you to do is hide from your truth, not deal with it. I wish I had somebody in here. Are, are you with me? You, you will not be delivered in pretense. You'll be delivered when you're honest with yourself. When you can look in the mirror and say, you a mess. You got to get yourself together, buddy. Right? And then the standard in which you're aspiring to is God's idea of who you are, not yours. So when we start talking about understanding self, come on, somebody. It can get pretty interesting, can it? Let me give you another example. You have, you have people that don't like dealing with people. See, when you're young... Right? You realize these folks get on my nerves. Right? So you stop dealing with people because they're getting on your nerves. As you get older, guess what you do? You create justifications for that mindset. I wish I had somebody. As you get a little bit older, you don't just create justifications. You make those justifications sanctified. I wish I had somebody in here. Am I lying? Are you with me? Huh? Yeah. And here, here go the reality, here go the reality of it. None of it is the truth. You got to go, go all the way back to that kid that was like, y'all getting on my nerve. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Praise God. And be honest with yourself so that you can remove the justifications. Right? Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah. That's why the Lord did me mad. They working you out, ain't they? <laughs> 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 oh, it's one o'clock. I'm sorry. Anyway, oh, I needed to finish this today. Am I making sense? When you start talking about understanding yourself, you got to be honest with yourself. You got to learn to deal with the layers that's within you so you can be free to manifest the truth of who you are. That's exactly right. It's real. I was talk, actually talking about myself. Uh, <laughs> amen, somebody. The next understanding the kingdom. Oh, that's, that's big, isn't it? Do you know there are people who think they're doing kingdom through dominance? Kingdom can't be through dominance, can it? Because that's not showing the love of God, is it? That's not leaving the freedom for people to be who God designed them to be. See? But there are people who really believe they're doing kingdom with dominance. Am I making sense? See, 
So when I start talking about understanding the kingdom, you got to be able to see it and understand it from God's position. God needs free will. That's what he said. He that, I promise you this, right? God wants to do it with his love and kindness. Oh, come on, somebody. This the text. Do we see how easy it is? Praise God. And most of the time you will express kingdom and its keenness and its keenness are its greatest way by walking in your truth. Do y'all see how powerful that really becomes? An understanding of the world systems. Because now we're back to interpreting things from God's position. Because all of the innovation, all of the creativity, even those people that have created and they wasn't in God's will in the sense of operating from God's truth or God's position, but they still operate in his, their design. Are you with me? Now, what happens when the believer comes along and interpret those things from God's position? Do you see how powerful that is? See how that's associated with kingdom? Am I making sense? Excuse me. Three levels of understanding. Knowledge, that's information and education. Comprehension and wisdom, the proper application of knowledge. Come on, somebody, because here's where we struggle. The first level most of us pretty all in right there. Once we start getting a, a, a pursuit for, for knowledge and a pursuit for truth, praise God, we all in right there. We get a little in the gray area around comprehension. <laughs> Don't. The Holy Spirit should be at lead. You know, I heard a prophet, a prophet said this the other day that was so powerful that this next generation is going to be fully engage with the Holy Spirit or weaponized through the Holy Spirit. Brother, that's all God has ever wanted us to do to really yield so the Holy Spirit could take over. So the Holy Spirit, man, I can't even begin to explain how much stuff the Holy Spirit has opened up to me, how much things he's shown me, how many things he's unlocked. I can't even begin to express. But if you let the Spirit take over, everything can change in real life. Hmm? That's the plan. That's the reason he gave you part of himself. And we constantly trying to do it ourselves in our own mind. We cannot. We cannot. And then wisdom, the proper application of knowledge. Come on, somebody. So many things that God wants to do through you if you're just letting. Right? The last point. He went on to say, pay attention to what you're listening to. That's big, isn't it? Knowledge will be measured out to you by the measure of attention you give. That's big, isn't it? You know, we use the term pay attention. Pay attention. But we don't have any intentions on paying anything. We don't. We, we, we think as, as knowledge is going forth, it's just going to jump in our mind. That's not how it works, is it? You ever been watching something that you wasn't paying any attention to and it's just happening? Come on, somebody. That's where how a lot of people sit in church. In real life, when, when in all actuality, you know, when I used to sit in church, the whole time somebody was teaching or talking or whatever like that, questions popping in my mind. And I'm not talking about to distract me. I'm talking about when they say something, I'm thinking, question. Yeah, yeah. They say this, question. And guess what I do when I got back to my word? Guess what wound up happening? I learned. Come on, a good Berean. That's exactly right. That's exactly how our interaction should be. I should be paying attention on such a level that I'm not just accepting anything someone says. Now, now let me say this. You should develop a relationship with leadership where you think I won't just take advantage of you or manipulate you. But that shouldn't keep you from going to look at the scriptures. Amen. You should be able to confirm whatever you hear me say, you should be able to go look in the word. And if you don't see it initially, shelf it. And guess what it's going to do? It's going to come. That's why I take notes. 
That's right. Come on. I give you a cheat code. Can I give y'all a cheat code for me? I only talk about the same thing all the time. I don't know how people make it complicated. And real, real talk, I, I'm talking about the same thing all the time. You know what I'm saying? All I'm talking about is foundations. <laughs> Building a solid foundation. I'm slow. No, nah, you shouldn't be the same thing. I'm slow. I, I process through God. things very slow. <laughs> but I process, you see, and that's the key. I process. I process slow. Some people may process faster than me. I process slow, but guess what? I'm processing. Yes, yes, yes. No matter how long it takes, I'm, I'm working with it. <laughs> You'll know when I get it. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. Mark 4.24, that was Mark 4.24. The other one, Mark 4.25. Those who understand these mysteries will be given more knowledge. But y'all missed a good place to shout. See, y'all should have went crazy right there. Right? However, some people don't understand these mysteries. Even what they understand will be taken away from them. <laughs> well, we finished that. Uh, say man, we finished. Thank y'all so much for joining us. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I